but no faith to witness God's love, to witness what we understand for those who come from this faith tradition as Christian love, and to share that in a radical in a way again and again. And so it's no surprise as, as we look to interpret the notion of service and justice and engagement on the part of students and colleges and young adults that it's at this place, it's in even this worship community, it's the people around here that we call for that radical sense of commitment. It was here at a gathering, I believe, just at the bar house or somewhere in the dining hall or something like that. Remember, we were talking about the bumper sticker, random acts of kindness. People know that. That's a nice thing to say. It used to be on our, 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 our minivan. But you know what I realized is that that's not what the gospel tells me to do. The gospel doesn't talk about random acts of kindness. It talks about strategic engagement for social justice. And as I think about the history and the struggle and the power and the overcoming that's happened in this region and that, that you have been a part of in terms of this culture and that you have welcomed me in, maybe not always welcomed me, but that sometimes I push myself into. That that's the kind of service. That's the kind of engagement. That's the kind of modern program. That's the kind of cultural service that we are called to look upon. One of my favorite scriptures is found in the book of Proverbs. It's actually Proverbs 31. And people use different parts of this, this, this Proverbs 31. It uh, talks about a lot of different things. But the part of it, my favorite part is, is speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destined. Speak up and judge fairly and defend the rights of the poor and needy. I think the first time I heard that passage, I thought of Larry Osborne. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly and defend the rights of the poor and needy. We cannot merely show up at soup kitchen or clean up a highway understand and claim these words to be our guide. It has been a challenging couple of years for all of us as we've learned, looked to, to try to create and strengthen a culture of service, a kind of service that, that is inspired by the founding of this institution, by the Baptist tradition of service and engagement and justice that, that has brought many of us to this institution. But with the coming to the endowment and the announcement of that, I'm thinking of my, the days when I was a college student. We used to have a saying is, how the date ended is how the date went. And the ending of this and the launch of the newness of the next thing is a powerful voice. I remember hearing a story of a woman. She ran a, 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 a program that used, it was the precursor to America. Department of Action. She was a woman from Chicago. She told me the story about her. she was a Vista. Uh, she was a Vista somewhere in, in the state of Kentucky. She talks about how when she went down there, she, she introduced herself as a, as a, as a Vista to, to one of the members of the community. The woman said, You mean your Vista? The man says, No, man, I'm not a Vista, I'm a Vista. Feel all the tears and service to America. The woman says, So you're a Vista? She says, No, man, Vista. And then the woman says, smile again, so you're a visitor. <laughs> and in fact, that's what she was. When I was done working at the pool, walking around being like my, my, my crazy self, what I had planned to do was I had planned to be a visitor uh, and a visitor, I suppose. Uh, down at Conroe College in Athens, West Virginia, I had met one Jerry Beasley, President Jerry Beasley, and he was a 44-year-old guy. Powerful presence, a prophetic voice. And I wanted to learn from him and do my service there. I don't know if you know where Copper College is, but it's right outside of Princeton, West Virginia. So I was heading down there, and I got the phone call from Mr. Bonner, and I did a U turn and ended up back in Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, not what I had expected. But then I made a U turn back to Princeton, West Virginia, and had spent the bulk of my work uh, over the last 20 years uh, in this region working to. To be inspired, to invent, to be tooled, to think. You know, those of you who uh, kind of have had to deal with the challenges of a 60 page rule that the Bonner Foundation now has for the Bonner programs. I remember being in Pigeon Forge, uh, working on Meta. It's the first
first bought our handbook at the Corral. And, and, and I remember writing on a half a piece of paper all the modern rules that existed. It's, um, it has kind of expanded no doubt from that. You know, when I think about my reflection, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping down from my, my job at the Bar Foundation uh, after 24 years. And when I think about it, I remember writing a piece for my college. Uh, you kind of have to explain yourself, I guess, when you go to Harvard. They always say, like, we want you to tell us what you're doing. And, uh, so I wrote, like a big shot, I said, well, I'm in Athens on my way to Rome. Well, I'm Athens, West Virginia, to Rome, Georgia, that is. And, uh, I think about my trip, and I think about the Apostle Paul and his trips to Berea. I've been to Berea, Kentucky. He preached at Mars Hill. I've been to Mars Hill, North Carolina. And Philip I at the Great Book Square, uh, West Virginia Wesleyan, and then Antioch. Uh, uh, and I've even been on the road to Damascus. Damascus is West Virginia. Uh, some folks are asking me, why? Why leave? When I was your age, we, would, we used to sit around and talk about how we needed to, uh, um, you know, in our passion for social justice, we need to work ourselves out of job. You know, we're not just going to kind of find a place and, and, and be there and have it serve us. We were going to work ourselves out of job. So, you know, after 20 years, it took me a while, but I've done that. So I've been telling my friends that, and they're like, I thought that was a pretty good job. <laughs> Why are you doing that, man? And then what they ask is, I applaud for your job. Well, it's not that I'm tired. It's not that I'm worn out. Uh, maybe I'll look that way a little bit. But I guess I wanted to leave on my own two feet. I've seen people stay too long. And, 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 and more than that, as I look out on faces that I know well and folks who I just met today, I have come to understand that there is a more powerful prophetic voice that is on its way, in fact, that is already here. <coughs> Not to be the, the metaphor of the giant oak, but when you do cut down the thing that's in the middle, or that's in the way, uh, new life, new life uh, gets its chance. And so I'm excited about what happens. I'm, I'm, I'm overjoyed about the sense of possibility and the promise that comes from the fact that now you need the Bonner Foundation. You need me water scholar and the water reader program in your campus and in your world. It's not like I'm uh, it's not like I'm dying in my cases. Um, and I'm not even retiring. I, I, I don't know how to play golf course. But I do have a new thing, and I'll just share it with you briefly, and that is that for over the last 25 years I've been working with college students and colleges and universities to try to build and sustain and rebuild the student movement around service and justice. What I hope to do for the next 20 years in my ministry is now to work with recent college graduates uh, and with local congregations around the country of all faiths. Realizing that for, for many of you, after you graduate, you want to do a year of VISTA or AmeriCorps or some other full-time service where you will make a commitment to live in an intentional community with others so that you can live out the gospel, live out your sense of faith. What I'll be doing is working with congregations and churches to create houses of hospitality. The number one reason why people have challenges doing that kind of service, that their services, they can't afford a place to live. And in many ways, the, the, the churches and congregations and the faith traditions have not been present for young people as they've been active in service and justice issues. Currently, with about 12 programs, programs like Mission Year, Jesuit Volunteer Corps and Brethren Volunteer Services, there are about 1,500 placements for young adults around the country to do justice. There ought to be 25,000. And so that in my, in my work from here on, I will work to establish houses for young adults who are serving a year or two of service. So the commitment for service and social justice want to live simple ways of life, want to live in community, and want to do their spiritual exploration For 21 years is a long time. I, uh, 20 years ago, I wasn't married. I had no children. Both my parents were alive. And uh, now 